color. Okay. So our next student that presents the next low side problem is Milena. And Milena has been on Zoom all this year, even though I must admit, I forgot her all the time. Milena was an ideal parallel learning student because she participated so seamlessly and her voice always supported me in the classroom that I sometimes would think she's somewhere here, just sitting in the classroom. So today I'm going to enjoy Milena's voice and her explanation of the next low side problem. But before we do that, I need to remind you of some beautiful ancient Greek theory. So this theorem was proven by an ancient Greek mathematician and geometrist named Thales. And it has a beautiful picture that illustrates it. Apparently, if you will take a semicircle, and I draw a semicircle here, so half of the circle, this is its diameter, and this is half of the circle. And if you will take any point on that circle, here, or here, or here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, you will time and time again see the same thing. If you connect that point to the end points of your diameter, The same thing each time. That if you start from a diameter endpoint, you go to the point of the circle and then you're ready to turn and go to the other endpoint, you will always have to turn at the right angle. This is a right angle, 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 and this is a right angle. So any angle that is inscribed into a semicircle is a right angle. And now I'm giving the floor to Milena who will present her low side problem. So the problem I solved is called low side of perpendicular feet. And the first thing I did to solve this problem was draw two points, which I called point A and point B. Next, I drew a random line through point B. and a line perpendicular to it that passes through point A. The point where these two lines meet is called the perpendicular's foot. And um, the pro to solve the problem, I need to figure out where all the perpendiculars feet, um, what shape they will form. So to find more perpendiculars feet, I drew more lines through point B.
and then lines perpendicular to those lines that pass through point A. And Ms. Slavina is doing this by taking her triangle and lining it up with one of the lines that passes through point B until the other edge of it lines up with point A and then drawing a line like, along that edge to form a right angle. And while a lot of lines can be drawn that pass through point B, there are two special ones. So the first one is a line that passes not only through point B, but also through point A. And this line's perpendicular foot is point A. And the second line is perpendicular to that line, passing through point B. And its perpendicular foot will be point B. So now that I have all of these perpendiculars feet, I noticed that they looked like they were forming a circle, but I didn't know if I, I didn't know how to prove this. And then I noticed that I noticed that you can follow a line from either point A or point B until it turns 90 degrees and then ends up at the other point. And this is the exact same thing as what happens in Thales theorem, which forms a semicircle. So that means that um, the loci of perpendiculars feet um, forms two semicircles, which make one circle whose diameter is the distance between point A and point B. So um, now Ms. Slavina can test this out by finding the midpoint of AB.
and then drawing a circle with the compass. And all of the points fall on the circle, which means that the perpendicular's feet form a circle. Thank you, Milena. 